Hey, hey, Alex here from Black Sheep IT Consulting. So 23.5 is out and has a bunch of very interesting new features or updated features. So here is a quick dive into the REST API updates for 23.5. So the first thing that strikes you when you look into your application interface profile is a new flag here. Allow anonymous inbound REST requests or, well, if you uncheck the flag, don't allow anonymous inbound REST requests. Now that's a very welcome addition to this profile because in previous versions there was no such flag and the only way to prevent anonymous user or anonymous requests was to actually enter dummy information into either uh, a wrong anonymous username or a wrong anonymous user password so there would be an error and no request would be possible so now this is a little bit more elegant by providing the flag so let's check it out so here I'm just in the browser doing a get request I have no means of entering any user, so it's definitely an anonymous request. And one thing about anonymous requests, if you allow it, that anonymous user will be used. Let's refresh that. So I get an error. There is no data for the requested resource, which means the anonymous user, in my case, a guest CST, has absolutely no visibility into any account so that's of course how it should be so you would be uh, would be very bad idea to maybe add uh, as admin or any administrative user here in the anonymous username so any anonymous request through the intranet or even internet if your ai or proxy is exposed on the internet it could be a serious data leak so that's good anonymous access is allowed but the anonymous user is secure enough not to yield any customer data but what about um, adding describe and that yields something the open api or in older versions the swagger 2.0 description in this case of the account business component so you're essentially leaking metadata. So you could say that's not big concern because who cares? <laughs> but uh, yeah, just leaking all your business component field names and maybe validation properties and stuff out in the open is not what you really want to have. So anybody with access to a browser and knowledge of the Siebel REST guide, which is on the public internet, could just issue a describe using get anonymously. So let's turn this off with the new feature, should be fairly easy. So I'm going to edit the AI profile and uncheck the flag, which also deactivates the anonymous username field and password field. Let's submit this. And let's see if it's effective immediately. So we'll just go back to the other tab and refresh. Okay, I get a 401 error, which is um, unauthorized, I think. So yeah, let's Google that really quick. But yeah, that's the unauthorized response. So that's cool. Um, that's uh, an immediate effect and no one with knowledge of the Siebel REST API can now, well, glean into your metadata. That's nice. So that's the first new feature, the new checkbox to allow or disallow anonymous inbound REST requests. The second feature or enhancement we're going to look at in the REST API as of Siebel 23.5 is the inbound REST data API access control, let's call it that. So if you go to sitemap and go to administration web services, there is a new view for ready for the Siebel administrator responsibility 
by the way. It's called Inbound REST API Access. So if you open that view, you will notice that you have a column for business object with a pick list, you, you, and you have a column for integration object with a pick list, <laughs> and you have a grant access flag. Now, there is a script running SQL during post-install database setup, which actually populates that table behind the scenes with your active integration objects. And as of 23.4 or earlier, when you want to access data through the Siebel REST inbound API, you have to use a base integration object. So those start with the name base and the space and then the exact name of the business object. So that was kind of a hardwired mapping between the business object and the integration object that is used to access the data through the data REST API. So that is functionality that is already present. So there's no change here. And we can prove that by, for example, going to Postman and I have a simple GET request to the account business object, account business component. I just want the name and the account status field and I don't want any child links. I have authorized with basic auth. So nothing spectacularly new here because that's how it works always since the introduction of the REST API. And I get a list of accounts with the row ID, always get that for free, and the account status. So that is one, there's another one, and so forth. That's probably 10 accounts with their status. Okay, all nice and easy. That's just working as expected and no change here. But let's try something. Let's try out the first uh, feature, that grant access flag. So obviously it's defaults to yes all over the place and you can uncheck that flag. I'm unchecking it for the account business object. Let's see what happens. So I'm saving that. Let's go back to Postman and send the request again. Oops, uh, business object question mark <laughs> is not enabled for access via REST. So quite clear the message here not sure why the question mark appears, but the business object is not enabled for REST. Clearly, we have unchecked the flag. So there's new feature number one <laughs> enabled by this view. You can quickly disallow access to, let's say, a standard business object, which has a standard base integration object. And you just don't want that access here. So, of course, be careful by not to deactivate, for example, the internally used automation data set or whatever. So that would be a bad idea. Okay, let's grant access again. And as you can see, it's effective immediately. I'm working in the client at runtime. There's no change in the repository whatsoever. And now it works again. Cool, really cool. So it seems to interrogate that flag every time. Now, the next feature enabled by this view is quite spectacular, to say the least. Now, we can be deliberated from the boundaries of those base integration objects. So, um, and we can actually pick another one. So, let's, for, for account, let's pick an integration object and let's use one which is a standard integration object, sample account SIA. I can select that and save that. And let's check it out real quick. I have it open here in web tools. So just go up to so prove that sample account SIA and has fewer integration components. So the potential children would be fewer. And the fields, it has a lot of deactivated fields like account status is actually inactive. So that's my point. I'm using account status and now I can prove that it uses this one because in Postman I'm, I'm requiring the account status field and in the integration object I have mapped it is inactive. So let's see what happens. Oops, yep, yeah. <laughs> as expected 
I have an invalid field error because that field is not active in the integration opt component of that standard or any other integration object. So I believe as long as it's internal, an internal integration object, others don't make any sense, you can actually map any custom integration object uh, to a business object, be it a standard business object or of course a custom business object where you have created your custom integration object. So that is quite neat as well. Okay, if you think that's wild, <laughs> let's get even wilder. So now let's just remove that integration object reference. So account now has no integration object mapped here. And let's see what happens postman. Okay, <laughs> it works again. Um, well, th there's the big question. Why does this work? This is where we're heading to the REST API guide in Bookshelf. So the 23.5 Bookshelf has all the update information that is here supporting RESTful access to Siebel business objects dynamically. So very recommended reading here so you can learn about the new dynamic I.O feature which essentially is enabled or disabled by a parameter enable dynamic io in rest of course you have to set it to true for the ei object manager or any object manager you use for the rest api and then there's a really cool flow chart here which shows the decision logic if um, there is no integration object present etc so the first thing is that the ei object manager checks if the dynamic io feature is enabled so if the parameter is true if no then you will you fall back on the base ios but if it's yes then it next checks if the business object has access enabled uh, as we have seen with the flag if no there's an error if yes, it checks if there is a valid integration object configured or present. So either you have mapped a valid integration object to your business object, or there is just one present. If that is yes, then it says use base IO. So practically this means if you have a base IO and none <laughs> specified, then it actually uses falls back on the base IO. So that's the reason why the query works again, because we're back on the base IO. So account has a base IO, so it always works even if you specify no business object, no integration object, sorry. Okay, so that's cool, but the diagram doesn't stop here. It actually says if Basically, there's no integration object configured or present, so not even a base I.O. or at, let's say absolutely no integration object can be found for the business object. Then it checks if dynamic I.O. XSD is present for the latest business object version. So here the bookshelf explains down below that an XSD is automatically generated or reused if available for the current version of the business object. So an XSD is used on the fly. So the business object and business component data and link data, etc., can be queried in real time without any integration object. Now that's something we would like to prove, right? So with account, we only get to the base IO because, well, it's there. We could deactivate it and see what happens. But let's say we just want to access this data, this data set here, right that we're looking at. So let's check out about view. So there's a business object. It's a Neo business object even, REST API access. And there's the business component. So with that, we can make a REST call to 
that business object and business component, no parameters. And yeah, you see already I ran it and <laughs> it works. So you could say, yeah, Oracle added a base integration object for that. That's why it works. So that's the, that's the data we just see in the view. There's the account business object with allow access, no integration object. That's just the data that we have just seen in the view. And let me prove here that there is absolutely no integration object for that business object. So let me grab the business object again. And let's say we query an integration object for anything with that business object in the name, like there would be a base IO. There is no base IO for that business object. Let's query for any integration object on that business object. There is no such thing. Or external name could be also where the business object name is. So let's query that. And there is <laughs> I'm 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 almost I'm 100% sure there is no integration object for that business object and it works because <laughs> also um a, a thing you should know the enable dynamic io in rest parameter when it's added in 23.5 during the update then the default value is set to true so that means this feature is enabled by default once you update to 23.5. The your REST API continues working at normally because you have your base I.O. mapping. So all the base I.O.s that you have are in place. Now let's do another experiment just to try that out because that object that we used, the REST inbound data access NEO, that wasn't really behaving as expected, but it's fun that it works too with NEOs. But here's a real business object and business component that exists and has no integration object. So we have audit trail bus comp. So let's check out the business object name. It's called audit trail admin and the business component is audit trail bus comp. So let's say I want to access that data via the rest API. So here we go. I create a request with that business object, business component. And if I send it off, it says, oh, it's not enabled via REST. To be honest, that what I was expecting that with my first example. So now that's a non-NEO, that's a classic business object, business component. And it says it's not enabled for REST. So that error message I remember. So let's copy that business object name. And let's go to that view. It's actually a wrong title, but it's okay. So let's re register the audit trail admin business object without any integration object and grant access. Well, let's see, we just register it, not granting access. We expect that not to work. Yeah, okay, that's fine. And now let's grant access and run the query. And okay, there's data. Wow, <laughs> no integration object, but access to the business object data. So how does that work? And that is where in that diagram, there is no valid integration object configured or present and no base IO definitely. So the system has checked if there is a dynamic IO XSD, which probably wasn't until the first query. And then it generates the XSD and uses that to run the query against the business object directly without any integration object. And for good measure, we, I went to the Siebel server. So there's a folder XSD. I'm not sure if it was there before. And there is a new XSD file, audit trail admin, audit trail bus com. So that's B O B C workspace name, version numbers 
obviously unchanged since version 0 or so. Well, let's open that XST and well, that's a lot of stuff there and it's practically probably the same thing you would get when you export an integration object to XST. So it generates that XST out of the information in the business object, business component and links, uh, making it a temporary or a on the fly integration object that can be used for the query. So that's, that's quite extensive here, really. Okay, but no need to get too involved with that because it just works. So let's see if we can, for example, run a filter on that. Let's say we want the bus comp. Let's see if we have data for the bus comp opportunities. Let's add a search spec. Bus comp equals opportunity and that works as expected too of course it's fully functional all right that's it for new features in the Siebel CRM inbound REST API for business objects in 23.5 and later Alex signing off thank you for watching take care and bye bye